Zines for Teens and Younger, a DIY craft for expressing yourself. What is a zine? It's a DIY booklet on any theme that you choose. All you need is paper, scissors, glue, something to draw with, some old magazines or newspapers, and then just get creative. You can even paint if you want to. It's all up to you. And if doodling's your thing, that's great for zines. You can draw anything you want. History of zines. Uh, don't worry, it won't take too long. Well, how did zines get to be a thing? Well, if you take the word fan and add it to magazine and shorten it, you get fanzine. That's what zines were originally called. And they were originally based on science fiction. There was a group of sci-fi fans that met regularly. They were called the Science Correspondence Club. And they wanted to keep in touch and keep talking about the things they were so crazy about. So they started making zines and sending them to each other. But some people trace the first zine back to an early patriot named Thomas Paine. He wrote a pamphlet urging rebellion against the British government around 1775 to 1776. And his pamphlet was called Common Sense. Now let's take a look up top at that word rebellion. Number one definition says, opposition to one in authority or dominance. Rebellion or going against authority is a big part of zines when they come back into popularity in the 1970s. In the past, zines were generally created by people who belong to a subculture. Let's look at that word. Sub means under or beneath. And culture is a pattern of behavior shared by a group of people. Lots of things make up a society's culture, like food, language, clothing, tools, music, arts, customs, beliefs, and religion. Let's look at the definition now. A subculture is an ethnic, regional, economic, or social group exhibiting characteristic patterns of behavior sufficient to distinguish it from others within an embracing culture or society. That's a mouthful, but just think of it as a smaller group with some behaviors that are different from the larger group. They might have their own fashion or their own way of speaking. When I looked up examples of subcultures, I saw surfers, skateboarders, bikers, anime fans, bodybuilders, and gamers. So how is a subculture different from a hobby? Let's use surfing as an example. In the 1960s, this vehicle was very popular among surfers. And surfer culture had a whole new brand of music to go along with it. And dressing was part of it too, surfer fashion. Sometimes subcultures have their own special vocabulary too, like hang 10, tubular, and dude, that was gnarly. Of course, that vocabulary, like everything else, can go in and out of fashion. So if I like to go surfing once in a while, maybe that can be considered a hobby. But if I'm involved in everything surfing, including the clothes, the way of speaking, the art, the music, the vehicles, then maybe I'm part of a subculture. Warning, upcoming pictures will not be very pretty. Like me. Or me. Wait, why not? Yeah, why not? Because punk rock isn't pretty. When you mix subculture and rebellion, you might get something like this. In the 1970s, punk rock became a way to rebel against the establishment and the current music tastes. It was loud, angry, and outrageous. 
it was also very independent. Major record companies and publications weren't really having any of it yet. So zines became a way for punk rockers to communicate with their fans. The whole thing was very DIY. Well, punk rock went a little bit mainstream in the 80s, but meanwhile, girls felt like they weren't being included so much in this thing, so they started their own thing in the 90s. It was called the Riot Girl Movement. It was sort of a mixture of punk rock and feminism. Women could be anti-establishment, loud, rude, and outrageous too. And they had their own zines circulating. All you needed was a copier and a stapler, and you could circulate them to your friends and other like-minded people. Today, zines can really be about anything. So I encourage you to just be creative and do what you want. If you're a writer, try some writing. If you like to draw, draw. Or cut things out of magazines. It's totally up to you. Before we get to the project, I just want to tell you about this book, The First Rule of Punk by Celia C. Perez. The main character is a 12-year-old girl. Her parents are divorced and she's starting a new school. She's got a lot of things to be concerned about, but she's also making friends and they're starting a band. One of the things she does to express herself is create zines and they're there throughout the book. It's really good. I never heard back from the publisher about being able to show you a page from inside the book. I'd like to say I'm a rebellious punk rocker and I'm gonna do it anyway, but let's just get to the craft. First, we'll make the booklet. You start with an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, fold it lengthwise first. Fold again like this. Now you're gonna open it back up and you'll see it's divided into four parts. Fold it back lengthwise and then take the edges and fold them toward that center crease. Now you're gonna unfold it and then fold it again like this and you're ready to make a cut right there on that crease. Just cut from the edge towards that intersection of creases, that's all. And you open it back up, and here's the tr kind of tricky part. Grab those creases, and you're gonna kind of Pull them together and make the booklet like this. You might have to try a few times. Do it again. Pull those up and then together. And once you've done that, just flatten down those parts and those become your pages. And then you've got your own zine. You don't even have to use staples. I already did doodles on this paper, so I'm gonna just see if I can use them as part of the zine. That's why I'm turning it inside out and folding it again. And here we go with the difficult part. And there we go. Oh, 
turns out that some of the pages are upside down, but that doesn't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and use it. I have another piece of paper that I already made. This one's different because after I folded it, I unfolded it and put little borders all around the different pages. So you could do that too. I decided to use paint with mine watercolors, so I'm just going to do a little painting to get started. I think what I'm going to do with this scene is just do a kind of theme for each page. And the theme for this page, the first page, is going to be something relaxing and calm. So I think I'll start by putting in some fluffy clouds. I'm going with the color blue for the theme. So I've cut out some circles and ovals from different pages of magazines, all different colors of blue. Now I'm going to jump over to the other zine, the one with all the doodles on it. And I'm doing themes on each page here, but this one happens to be food. So I've got hot tacos, pie on a stick on a pier, pizzeria restaurant, and some words about mushrooms. And here's what the front page looks like. And as you can see, the center part is devoted to the theme of sports. And this page has the Lego lady with the punk pink hair, and it's a little sarcastic with blah, 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 quote of the year, this is fine. Realistic, yikes, hello well. So really, you can make your zine however you want. You can make it a how-to, you can devote it to a theme, or you can do different things on different pages. It's up to you. And don't forget, you can share them with your friends. Thanks for watching. Now go have fun, and remember, you can get points for Read Squared by entering this program code.